What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you are all doing well today and welcome to today's video, which is something a little bit different. I'm going to be answering the big question, well no I'm not actually, I'm going to be making a case for and against two players starting in the Chelsea lineup for when football commences again. Two players being of course, you've seen from the title and thumbnail, Billy Gilmore and Jorginho, the Scottish Iniesta, Billy Gilmoreño, the teenage sensation that exploded on the scene in English and indeed to a degree in European football, and Jorginho, Chelsea's vice captain, the regista, the <laughs> Brazilian Italian that's won back the hearts of, I say won back, he never had it in the first place, won the hearts of Chelsea fans after the whole Sarri regime that was an interesting and peculiar time for Chelsea Football Club and indeed its fan base. Now, both of these players work at an optimum rate when playing at the base of a midfield, I suppose, in a midfield free. Generally how Chelsea play, but if Chelsea were to play a game tomorrow, a important game, who would Frank Lampard pick? Would he pick Billy Gilmore or would he pick Jorginho? I'm going to be posing those questions today in today's video and I'm going to make a case for both and once you've watched the video, I want you guys to get down in the comment section below and express your opinion on the matter. Let's start with Jorginho, joined Chelsea with Maurizio Sarri, purchased from Napoli. It is thought that Jorginho's price at around £57 million was actually uh, had a bit of juice on top and inflated price to deal with a sort of payoff for Maurizio Sarri because De Laurentiis, the big dog at Napoli, didn't want to let Sarri go for nothing. So they came to a sort of peculiar conclusion that Sarri would join Chelsea as coach and they would buy Jorginho, but for a little extra cash than perhaps they would have done otherwise and that season comes to Chelsea Football Club as opposed to Manchester City who are of course courting the Brazilian Italian. So Jorginho came to Chelsea. Uh, people learned what he was all about, the <laughs> quarterback, the playmaker, the regista. Regista became in vogue because he was the sort of player that got rid of the ball very quickly. He was a metronomic cog in the base of a midfield, very neat and tidy, and he was recycling possession quicker than the norm in the Premier League. It became vogue for a while, and thus Regista was reborn in <laughs> English football fandom, I suppose. Problem is, Chelsea had issues with Maurizio Sarri. Certainly the fan base did. There was never really any emotive connectivity with the coach, and when Sarri's football, which can be very attractive and positive indeed, wasn't working at Stamford Bridge, the fans turned on the brand of football, I guess to a degree the coach, but really a lot of them were booing Jorginho because they saw him as Maurizio Sarri's general on the pitch, and because you know, stylistically he's not the kind of player to score goals or perhaps do anything too dramatic. He was an easy target. When he was getting subbed on or off, the fans would boo him, which is pretty sad and unfair if you ask me. But this story has a happy ending because with uh, hard work, dedication and a good attitude, Jorginho won the Chelsea fans over. He started being aggressive against opposition, sticking tackles in, getting in people's faces, jeering up his teammates, always converting penalties. Pretty immaculate penalty conversion record at Chelsea Football Club. Scored a couple of goals, his first goal was a banger, and before you know it, his dedication and attitude had Stamford Bridge singing his name. Jorginho! Lovely scenes considering where he's come from. And, you know, the brand became Chelsea's Jorginho, no longer Maurizio Sarri's Jorginho. So it was a nice story and, you know, Chelsea win the Europa League, finish third, get to a final. The season's okay, but no, you know, not too many people are sad when Maurizio Sarri moves on in the summer. Of course, Frank Lampard comes in, he sees Jorginho train and he really, really likes him. He sees him as a sort of authoritative character. He pretty much immediately makes him Chelsea vice captain, which is a big shout. Of course, he'd only been at Chelsea for probably, I don't know, under a year maybe by the time he met him. I don't know. Still, massive shouts. He sees the sort of leadership in him and he knows he trains very well and plays very hard. So Frank Lampard loves Jorginho. Now, I'm not saying Jorginho is limited. He can make an excellent long pass. We've seen him him do it to Tammy Abraham and his defensive stats aren't as bad as what perhaps people might perceive. Generally he's a good player but the biggest thing in comparison to Billy Gilmore who I'm about to talk about is 
he's got the seniority and leadership. And he has got a touch of that Jorginho as well. He knows when to get a yellow card and he's just got that experience in the midfield and of course he's in his prime as a player. So Frank Lampard who perhaps wants a bit of seniority on the pitch, likes experience and likes a good attitude, he might pick his vice captain Jorginho. But when you look at the comparison and also you might say well Billy Gilmore's a teenager who's hardly played if we play a game tomorrow it has to be Jorginho if he's fit and not suspended but let's bring Billy Gilmore into the conversation the teenage superstar sensation that really does look like he's got the frame of a 13 or 14 year old boy and on the surface if you looked at both players you'd be like well obviously I'm taking the 27 or whatever 28 year old Italian over that 14 year old little Scottish kid but it doesn't take long at all to make a very strong case for young Billy Gilmore immediately starting for Chelsea and indeed if there was a game tomorrow perhaps starting him in the base of the midfield. I'll tell you why. I mean, you probably don't need me to tell you why, because you probably know, but I'm about to say it anyway. Two high-profile starts in the Premier League and the FA Cup against both Merseyside clubs in uh, Everton and Liverpool respectively. Two Man of the Match awards. Incredible scenes. Chelsea saw off champions of Europe, Liverpool in the FA Cup with a comprehensive 2-0 win where Billy Gilmore won Man of the Match and had Fabinho on toast and this was not a second string Liverpool side at all. In fact, Liverpool had more stronger players than Chelsea did in terms of their respective squads but Chelsea comprehensively beat Liverpool with a 2-0 scoreline and when the Premier League returned and Chelsea faced Carlo Ancelotti's Everton who had been playing very very well indeed Indeed, Chelsea had a 4-0 victory where, yet again, Billy Gilmore was the star of the show, winning man of the match in the Premier League. Now, he has started for Chelsea before. I watched him live. I think it was uh, in Grimsby in the early stages of the Cup. He was absolutely excellent back then too, but you've put him in two really high-profile games to see how he can perform. And not only did he grab it by the scruff of the neck, he was the best player on the pitch, and not only that, he actually makes players around him look better. When playing in the midfield with both Ross Barkley and Mason Mount, he made both those players look excellent. Now I'm a big fan of Mason Mount, I think he's a very useful and good modern midfielder, but still, when you've got Billy Gilmore playing there, the other midfielders seem to have played better. Perhaps it's because he recycles possession quicker than Jorginho, I'm not so sure. Maybe naturally he's a little bit more nimble because he's smaller and he sort of <laughs> scampers about the place. The kid's tough as well. He may be absolutely tiny, but he's from Glasgow. Sure, you know, Jorginho gets a lot of yellow cards and maybe knows when to put a foul in, but he's not really up for a fight and he doesn't really like tackling too much, whereas Billy Gilmore, he loves getting stuck in and he, you know, as Frank Lampard often says, what he doesn't have in physical stature, he makes up in personality and he definitely displays that on the pitch. Young Billy Gilmore as well says he looks up to players like Iniesta and Cesc Fabregas and wants to be that player that plays deep, recycles possession quickly, but he can also play in a further midfield role like a number eight and try and score goals too. For me, my personal opinion in terms of how the players play and what they can offer in terms of their whole skill set, I think Billy Gilmore will be more valuable and probably the better player in my opinion. And I'm not a Jorginho hater by any means, I think he's excellent and I think he is very much a specialist player, Jorginho. I've always been a great appreciator of his work and Napoli and indeed Chelsea Football Club and I definitely would immediately concede to his leadership skills and understand why he's been given the vice captaincy by Frank Lampard almost immediately. And to be honest, common sense might dictate that you start Jorginho over Billy Gilmore if there was a game tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe this sort of experience and seniority card pulls rank over the teenage sensation. But really, if you were a pragmatist and you looked at things objectively, looked at Chelsea's last two performances and how they were so, so good, and the common denominator was the man who won Man of the Match twice, you'd look at that and be like, do you have the balls to drop Billy Gilmore in the next game? I'm not sure I would. But then again, do you upset Jorginho and then just rely on this young Scottish teenager to be the pivot of your midfield moving forward? Probably not. You probably need to rely on your vice captain, your experienced midfielder, and rotate in. So maybe, just for the sort of morale balance, you would start Jorginho. Still, 
It's a really difficult, complex and somewhat delicate situation so I wanted to put it out to the people and get your opinion. So get down in the comment section below, let me know what you think about Billy Gilmore and Jorginho. If Chelsea were to play a game tomorrow, who would you start at the base of the midfield between the two? If you've enjoyed the content I've provided for you guys today, please do like the video. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you are indeed new. and Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. Enjoy the football that's not happening, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby